Nobody Loses All the Time by Edward Eslin Cummings. Now, Cummings is a modern poet. He's considered one of the early rebels of the modern movement, uh, very much against traditional forms and ideas. You can just see he has such a chaotic, unstructured layout in his poems, um, random capitalization and punctuation. And it, this, the typography, the way it's set out, you can see the, it's very unusual. Um, he varies the spaces and breaks rules. And um, yeah, he, he, not only does he, through his structure, break rules, but he touches on subjects in such an unusual way. As an example, we're about to look at a poem where Sol has actually had quite a tragic life and he's drowned himself in a water tank, but the narrative style comes across as humorous. It's a parody. It's satirical. Uh, we have a, what we can imagine to be a southern narrator, relatively simple-minded from the way that he speaks, particularly about the funeral um, and yeah and and what's missing here is the feeling for soul and we have a sing-song flippant fun narrative style that really clashes with with the content and that certainly makes it part of that experimental modern movement nobody loses all the time i had an uncle named Saul who was a born failure, and nearly everybody said he should have gone into vaudeville, perhaps because my Uncle Sol could sing, my canny was a diver, on Christmas Eve, like hell itself, which may or may not account for the fact that my Uncle Sol indulged in that possibly most inexcusable of all to use a highfalutin phrase luxuries that is hard to wit farming and be it needlessly added my uncle soul's farm failed because the chickens ate the vegetables so my uncle soul had a chicken farm so the skunks ate the chickens where my uncle Sol had a skunk farm, but the skunks called cold and died. <laughs> and so my uncle Sol imitated the skunks in a subtle manner, <laughs> or by drowning himself in the water tank. But somebody who'd given my uncle Sol a Victor Victrola and records while he lived presented to him upon the auspicious occasion of his decease a scrumptious not to mention splendiferous funeral with tall boys and black gloves and flowers and everything. And <laughs> I remember we all cried like in Missouri when my Uncle Sol's coffin lurched because somebody pressed a button and down went my Uncle Sol and started a worm farm. <laughs> right, now, that narrator... <laughs> Uncle Sol's nephew seems to have very little feeling for Sol. There is an extensive amount of criticism from the word go. We see the title Nobody Loses All the Time, which would be some kind of truth or point that the narrator is going to try and prove by telling us the story of Uncle Sol. But notice, immediately, the criticism comes through because he was born a failure, Uncle Sol, according to this family member. And also, he was probably a good entertainer, but it's not really a compliment to say you should go into vaudeville, because that would have been real commercial, light-hearted entertainment. And uh, even the choice of song singing McCann, he was a diver on Christmas Eve. And like hell, it sounds like he, he could just belt a song perhaps when he was drunk, you know, Christmas Eve. 
But it's not exactly saying that uh, he has a tremendous amount of, of talent here. Um, you go to the second stanza and immediately there is an accusation that Uncle Sol indulged in farming. Okay, now that sounds ridiculous, but what the nephew is trying to say is that farming is a luxury. You know, you work for yourself, and of course it's not a luxury. This is just the nephew's perspective. Um, and he's trying to imply that his uncle had delusions of grandeur, and he should have stuck to something simpler. Uh, he wasn't... So, you know, may, he certainly wasn't talented in farming. He could sing silly songs, but farming was not for him. And then you see this extensive description of what went wrong, moving from the vegetable farmer to the chicken farmer to the skunk farmer. And of course, the skunks eventually die. And it's just a ridiculous story. So much exaggeration. It's ludicrous. But then that ridiculous idea of his lack of success at farming ends with Uncle Sol, who imitates the skunks, according to the nephew, in a subtle manner and drowns himself in a water tank. I mean, that's a shocking statement coming at the end of this series of humorous failures. And this is where that modern experimentation comes in, because the poet is deliberately doing this to shock us, okay, as uh, the reader, as we think about, hang on a second, firstly, whoa, 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 there's nothing subtle about drowning yourself in a water tank. And to link a human suicide to the imitation of the death of skunks is ludicrous and very insensitive. Um, and of course, then you go to the climax of the poem, really, where everything, you know, after we've heard about the death now, um, we get to the funeral, which, according to the speaker, is just the best thing about Saul. Forget his life, you know, he was a born failure, but his funeral was amazing. And this is where <laughs> it gets really twisted and and, uh, and and the humor is so dark and the irony just comes through because here, yeah, look at all these descriptions. Um, the, the best thing about Saul, according to the nephew, is the fact that he knew someone, he had connections and this particular connection was able to pay for him to have an amazing funeral with all the bells and the whistles. You press a button and the coffin goes down and, you know, you had these boys carrying the coffin. They were nice and tall, they had black gloves and awesome flowers everywhere. And it was a big spectacle because people cried like the Missouri, this big river. And um, the coffin even lurched just to add to the excitement as, you know, it was being lowered into the ground. So uh, this just really shows the complete uh, lack of respect for the life of soul and tries to uh, imply that his success came in in this magnificent funeral and the fact that his body then decomposed and became food for worms. So there you go. It's a, a twisted version of farming, but... You know, no one loses all the time. Not even Uncle Sol. Look at what happens to him at the end. But, of course, it's a dark message. It's a twisted message. If you didn't set out to die and you had to die to achieve success, well, then that's not success. Okay, you, you lost your life for something. So, um, there, I mean, is there really success here? No, but... I think that there are different ways of understanding this poem, but we we can look at the criticism that is perhaps leveled at the narrator and the speaker. Uh, the speaker's the one with no sensitivity, and Uncle Sol would be the example of someone who's possibly misunderstood um, or who's just...
just not taken seriously by his family at any point and possibly so isolated that yeah coldness of society matches the coldness of the water that he drowns himself in Anna tried to prove that even so who was a born loser succeeded at some point in his life and that is why nobody loses all the time but he didn't achieve anything this narrator because quite frankly his example of uncle Sol's success becoming a successful farmer in death and because he had a fabulous funeral uh no we <laughs> we don't see that as success and all we see is a very insincere, cruel, cold family member and possibly even society that never really gave Sol much credit for anything. And that's despite Sol's efforts in life, his obvious uh, charisma and even his attempt, his ambition, trying something new, farming and even farming skunks. But um, yeah. What we just see is the derision and scorn of the narrator, and uh, although it's humorous, underneath this is quite a serious message. It, you just get that feeling that you know life is cruel and then you die. And uh, is there actually hope coming through here? Is this motivational? I'd say no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> okay, this is one of those poems that just say sometimes you get unlucky, you know that. Even if you're a nice person and you entertain people and they like you, um, yeah, life is not going to show you any favors or, you know, any preferential treatment. And so, yeah, it can be really cruel. And then just when you're looking at the poem, consider how the lines taper off at the end as the coffin is being lowered into the ground. That typography, the layout of the poem, really reinforces the idea of a coffin being lowered into the ground. And then consider the parenthesis, the extra information at the end of the poem. Usually, parenthesis extra information not that important but this is a modern poet experimenting with punctuation and ideas so he uses the brackets at the end and he deliberately puts a really important message in the brackets okay what he does is he shows the ironic example of success in the brackets he's highlighting it where the narrator is saying oh look he's successful you know his body decomposes and so therefore that's a version of farming is food for worms uh what e. e cummings is telling us is watch that um this is not success okay this is not success uh, life is cruel and you die and often people really don't care about your life they just care about what excitement your life brought to them and even if that might be a tragedy like your death or funeral um, it's just this twisted side of human nature now you could also just see this poem as straight entertainment imagism but um, one is inclined because this is a modern poet uh, writing at a time where poets were disillusioned particularly after you know World War II and um, they'd lived through quite a bit of trauma and they were not the optimistic types who saw society as just a wonderful place okay they had seen experienced war and just general um, like the breakdown of families and hardship and to me it comes through in this sort of poem right you can just pause and read some of the ideas on this slide we know it's conversational we've got the free verse it's unstructured overly wordy from our narrator but that's what's making the narrator look ridiculous as opposed to uncle soul and then the dark humor of the choice of words like scrumptious and splendiferous scrumptious refers to food you cannot describe a funeral as scrumptious of course the dark humor coming through because soul becomes food for worms and then just take a look at the pun on soul 
S-O-L, the man, and S-O-U-L, your soul, your spiritual side, the essence of a human being. It's as if the world, and particularly the family, did not see or recognize the spirituality, the soul, S-O-U-L, of soul, S-O-L. And um, soul and so, we get so-so, neither good, neither bad. We've got this half rhyme coming through with the repetition, but it's the soulless way they describe soul that comes through. And by the way, S-O-L means um, sun, as in the sun in the sky. And uh, the sun in the sky is gone at the end of the poem. Definitely, we have empathy for soul because of the way this um, narrator uh, presents his uncle. And pause and read this slide. Uh, have a look at the questions. There are some suggested answers on the next slide.